Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Jack Threads. Today on Variant, I talk about a real life super soldier program. It looks like you can believe what you read in comics. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than Squints loves Wendy Peppercorn. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Since all of us were kids, we've always been told by our parents that what we see in comics isn't real. For instance, when I was six, I tried climbing up the second story banister, and my mom yelled at me, what do you think, you're Spider-Man or something? Get off that, Spider-Man's not real. But today I'm going to talk about DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, and how they're working on making soldiers into pretty much real-life superheroes. So, take that, parents. Like I just mentioned, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is working on a super soldier program, a $3 billion super soldier program to be exact. The project got started to help make a metabolically dominant soldier. So in layman's terms, the military is studying on how to use technology and biology to combine man, machine, and science to transcend the limits of the human body. The project director was actually quoted saying, my measure of success is that the International Olympic Committee bans everything we do. So basically, he wants to create soldiers that are so beyond any normal person's limits that they would be considered superhuman and therefore wouldn't be allowed to compete in the Olympics, which is both scary and a dream come true all at the same time. Because yes, we'd have real life Captain Americas, but let's face it, it's only a matter of time before it ended up in the wrong hands and boom, we have real life supervillains. As far as what they're working on, they're working on gear, gadgets, and suits that are things Tony Stark would make. The wearable gear would enable running at 100 meter Olympic sprinter speeds for hours on end, along with giving the person a seven foot vertical leap. The capability of wall crawling, which being the huge Spider-Man fan I am, I say heck yeah to that one. Also flight and enhanced strength, which is probably the two top things people would want if asked what superpowers they could have. Not to mention invisibility and being able to carry huge weapons on your back, kind of like War Machine. But I did say this was a super soldier program, meaning they're trying to alter the genes within our bodies to make humans stronger and superhuman without the help of gadgets. And I meant what I said, because I don't lie. And also because they're doing just that. They're working on drugs and genetic enhancements and some technology that would allow for regeneration just like Lizard from Spider-Man, faster healing just like Wolverine, enhanced strength just like Captain America, and even something that would make you like the God of Thunder Thor where you can operate without sleep for days without lack of performance. They're even talking about fixing your cells so that you can live off your fat, which sounds gross, but it's cool at the same time. They're saying spin-off drugs could also be made from it to use in the $40 billion a year weight loss industry in the US. So imagine being able to play all the Call of Duty and Halo you want while sipping down on some Red Bull and Mountain Dew and never gain weight. That sounds like a dream to me. What's also a major focus is helping soldiers' body to deal better with trauma and physical injury. One idea in development is a pain vaccine. Researchers are hopeful that these vaccines will be able to block the senses of pain for almost a month. It would block the pain in less than 10 seconds. So let's say you're in war and you get stabbed, you would only feel the pain for less than 10 seconds before the vaccine kicks in and then boom, no more pain. It supposedly doesn't stifle your reactions either. If you were to touch a hot stove, you still would have the initial shock. Your hand would automatically jerk away. But after that, the pain would be gone. DARPA says they have already hit its first milestones in animal testing and are preparing reports for scientific conferences. One of my favorite things that they're developing is something that's straight out of Marvel Comics Shield. They're making new body armor that's filled with nanomaterials that are connected to a computer. It's basically computer controlled liquid armor. It would normally be as flexible as a regular uniform made fabric, but like how airbags work in car crashes, it would activate when the system detects a bullet strike and turn as hard as steel in an instant. The fabric could even be woven into nano muscle fibers that would stimulate real muscles, giving the soldiers an estimated 25 to 35% better lifting capability. So pretty much what I'm saying is Lucius Fox works for DARPA. In conclusion, it looks like Stan Lee and all the other great minds of comics are right, and our parents wrong. Jack Threads has quickly become the online shopping destination for dudes, and here's why. Everything on the site is up to 80% off, because full price is for suckers. They serve up killer contemporary and street apparel, accessories, and gadgets from brands like Converse, Penguin, and Busted Tees. Shopping is stupid simple, and all styles are curated, so buyer's remorse, it just doesn't happen. And as a viewer variant, you can skip the membership waitlist and get instant access at jackthreads.com forward slash variant.
Did you know that the greats Joe Simon and Jack Kirby are cited for being the first comic book artists to draw a double splash page? They did so in Captain America issue 6. Kirby actually explains in an interview which says the following. Yes, we were always innovating. We did the first double splash page and there were none before Simon and Kirby created it. We felt that the format of the comic book had to have a little balance and a double splash page added the dramatization of what we were doing. So there you have it kitties. Next time you see an awesome double splash page in comics, you can thank Mr. Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. First up for Wednesday, March 13th, we have Uncanny X-Men Issue 3. Everything has changed for Magneto in the last few weeks. Can he prove he is still the master of magnetism? And Cyclops and the rest of his crew take the revolution on the road, gathering up some more. Here we have Wolverine Issue 1. Wolverine is getting his own title once again. Who wouldn't want to check this out? Now we have The Walking Dead Issue 108. The Walking Dead is one of the most popular comic franchises out right now because of the TV show. But it all started with the comic. So if you love the show, read the comic. Next we have Batman and Robin Issue 18. After what happened in Batman Incorporated Issue 8, I'm super curious to see where this title will be heading. And finally we have Batman issue 18. Welcome guest artist and one of my favorite artists, Andy Kubert. In the wake of an unspeakable tragedy, Batman is in danger of losing his humanity. And in the backup story, Harper Road returns, but we should be able to pull Batman back from the brink. Well guys, that is it for today on Variant, but before I go, it's giveaway time. I'm going to be giving away a signed copy of one of my favorite miniseries from last year, Alpha Girl. Writer and friend Sean Paul Bonjour actually sent me a signed copy of the trade paperback to give away to you guys. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. All you guys have to do to win this is draw the best zombie you can and tweet it to me at twitter.com forward slash Aris underscore Quinones or post it on our Variant Facebook page and I will pick the drawing I think is the best. Then I will contact you guys via Twitter or Facebook and send this awesome comic your way. But now I really must go and leave you guys once again, but don't worry, I'll see you next week when I talk about five comics that I think should be made into movies.